Now, let me ask you this question. Um, looking ahead of, of, I mean, we've just talked about uh, this open marriage uh, question, which uh, was revealed on Nightline by Newt Gingrich's ex-wife. Any, any impact in your view, Dory? I mean, uh, is this going to uh, affect Newt Gingrich in the, in the uh, road ahead? I think I think a bit. Um, as Ben was saying earlier, this isn't new information. We've known for a long time about Marianne's allegations and dissatisfaction with Newt, the fact that he had had an affair with his current wife, the fact that he had a, uh, um, an affair even during his first marriage. This is he's now on his third marriage. So I think that when it comes down to it, values voters are going to look at him and they may say, hmm, for the time being, he's better than Romney. We want to send a message to Romney. But ultimately, they are not going to be satisfied with Newt Gingrich. Now, Garrett, uh, the, same, the same question. I mean, why hasn't this uh, uh, resonated in South Carolina the way some thought it might? I think there is a real panic right now among conservatives, particularly anti-Romney people, about unifying behind somebody, anybody, who could possibly stop Mitt Romney's march to the, to the nomination. And even if it's a guy who has questionable credentials for social conservatives, unlike, some guy, um, unlike somebody like Rick Santorum, who, is, you know, the, 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 who originally was really running as the token social conservative in the race, uh, they need to get behind somebody. So I think they're willing to tolerate, uh, tolerate his, uh, his uh, mistakes. Okay, let's and, turn and shortcomings, really. Gotcha. Well, Anna, uh, let's talk about this in the context of what you experienced in, in South Carolina. Uh, this question about the open marriage, uh, as Dory po pointed out and as Garrett has pointed out, it's not a new issue, but how is it resonating in South Carolina given that it's, uh, it's resurged in a, uh, in a rather unusual way with the revelation coming directly from, uh, from his ex-wife on Nightline? Well, you know what I thought about when I heard the revelations was after talking to voters in South Carolina throughout the week, I thought, I bet Rick Perry might just be a little bit regretful that he got out of the race in the morning instead of waiting till Thursday evening after these revelations had started sprinkling out in the press. Because I think he would have been positioned to, you know, be that values candidate who is Protestant to say, you know, I've got a strong family, vote for me, but he's not in the race. And so what I think is interesting is when I talk to voters about Newt Gingrich, People readily said, he's got baggage. I know he's got baggage, but I love the fight. It's the combativeness that people were responding to. Sure, he's from the South, but it's that fight. And so I think that that, you know, in a state where folks really want Barack Obama to lose, where Mitt Romney comes off as a little bit milk toast, as somebody that's not their kind of fighter. And so that's what I think Newt Gingrich has really, you know, that's why these two debates were so pivotal for him this week. And, and his response to that question in the debate to John King, he just turned it exactly to his advantage, saying, I can't believe you're asking me this question. And I think he made that moment, you know, totally used it to his advantage. And of so, of course, we don't know exactly what the polls have done, you know, what folks are thinking you know, on the ground since these revelations have been, you know, just, you know, it's just been about 24 hours. Well, but let's, let's see, Anna, let's see how this uh, plays uh, in the weeks ahead. Anna, thank you very much.